Okay, I'm going to rant a little bit about beekeeping in uh, the United States mostly. Uh, I, I'm a new beekeeper. I'm an amateur. I started about a year and a half ago. Got two hives. Uh, they both died over this last winter, probably because I'm a poor beekeeper. I'm new to it. And uh, I didn't use any chemicals. And, and I think most likely they died because uh, they didn't have population that, that they needed to get through the winter. I had both of them, I lost the queens for whatever reason last summer, and they went without a queen for a number of weeks before I could re-queen. And uh, they just lost that, you know, that inertia that they had in late spring. So, uh, you know, here's, I'm an organic beekeeper that just lost both of uh, my hives, so uh, um, it's a tough, tough game. But all I can say is, I, you know, I'm back in the game. I'm going to do it again this year, and you're going to see some videos. I'm starting with a top bar hive, and uh, for me, that's the only way to go. Uh, the Langstroth hive is is absolutely uh, a ridiculous idea that uh, one can only use. Uh, uh, w with uh, all these chemicals and, uh, um, and, and, and the use of foundation. These are crazy ideas. Uh, the, the top bar hive uh, allows one to maybe not get as much honey, but you're, you don't need to use chemicals. Uh, you know, I, I just want to, uh, my, I'm a member of two, beekeep, two beekeeping clubs, and basically for both clubs, all we talk about is chemicals, and, you know, everyone loves chemicals, you know, I, I, I have not met an organic beekeeper yet, not one organic beekeeper in any of my clubs, so that's crazy, you know, they talk about 50% losses, you know, as high as 50% losses, doesn't that tell people, hey, what's going on here, shouldn't we be concerned that we have 50% losses and we're using chemicals in our hives. Maybe we're doing something wrong. Maybe, possibly, the bees are actually, they actually suck. And that's, that's the strain of bee that we have now. That, and it's not their fault. They've been um, bred that way in the last few hundred years of big honey production, very little propolis, which is the uh, immune system of the bee. And, and they're very mild. That's what we have now. Well, they happen to suck in that way. So uh, we need to stand back and, and maybe uh, breed better bees. And I, you know, I'm not a breeder. I don't know how to do that. But uh, the answer is not... All I know is I'm an idiot when it comes to beekeeping. Because I'm walking in totally green. And all I know is I'm not putting chemicals in my beehive. Well, you're going to have dead bees. Well... Maybe, yes, I might have dead bees, but if I have 10 colonies and 9 of them die and I have one that lives, I'm going to breed that hive like crazy. And then next year, I'm going to have 9 losses and I'll breed that way. And, and call me stupid, but that's the only way we can get out of the mess that we've gotten ourselves into by breeding weak bees and propped up with chemicals. And some of these chemicals are absolutely insane. Why would you put these chemicals in your beehive? You know, the Varroa mite is, is akin to like having like a basketball on you, on your back. It's that same scale. So I was sort of thinking, well, okay, scale it into like a dog, a dog, a small terrier on the back of your head. And okay, now you have to get rid of that dog. Okay, put yourself in a room and you got to kill the dog using a chemical, but you're not going to harm me. Okay, good luck. Put, introduce a chemical into the room that kills the dog on the back of my head, but doesn't harm me. Good luck with that. So how's that working out for you? Right now you're getting 50% losses, uh, horrible honey that's full of shit, and where's that gotten us? And now that I'm on my rant here, I'm going to take a little swipe at the old timers and beekeeping. I'm, I'm into antiques, I'm into the old time ways, I'm into traditions, but I, I, I'm going to take a swipe with old timers and beekeeping. Uh, from what I've seen in the last year and a half, uh, they're not doing beekeeping any good because they tend to be addicted to, to drugs and 
uh, chemicals going into the eye. Uh, and, and I don't know where that comes from. I mean, maybe it's from the, uh, you know, post World War II world of the 50s and 60s when, you know, drugs and, and chemicals were, you know, they were man's best friend. DDT, Agent Orange, these are gonna, these are easy ways of, of, of getting your, of uh, problem solving. And they, and they grew up with that. And, you know, I go to these meetings and some of these beekeepers are, are pretty old. And boy, they love putting these crazy chemicals in, in, uh, in their hives. And I, you know, I, I went to a beekeeping like one-on-one -on -one class last year, and uh, you know, the first half of the class was, you know, from eight to twelve was bee anatomy and how the bee works, and we were all really fascinated. We're all, you know, no one knew what we were doing. We we're just sitting there, and it's like, oh, this is really cool. And then we took a lunch, came back, and at one o'clock. From one to five, it was about bee diseases and the chemicals you need to put inside of your hives. And I was sitting in the back of the class, and I could just see people's shoulders just slump. They didn't realize, and, and me included, that this was where beekeeping was. Beekeeping was had nothing to do with beekeeping. It, you were a doctor uh, administrating drugs to a hive. And, and at one point, someone said, you know, and I just wanted to be, I just wanted to have a beehive. I just wanted to have an organic beehive. And, and our teacher, who's a good guy, um, he, he said, well, you'll have dead bees. So, you know, I, I, I was thinking already at that point, well, there's got to be a better way. And, uh, and unfortunately, none of the beekeepers here where I'm at are organic beekeepers. And so I've had to go online and I've, I found good podcasts like I think there's a guy in Maryland and he, he does a, I think it's called the organically managed beekeepers podcast and this guy's he's a great guy because I think he's a lot like me he's new to beekeeping so he doesn't have some of the, uh, some of that old witchcraft uh, he's just trying to learn and trying to be organic and uh, and my big hero right now is Phil Chandler who is uh, pro top bar hive uh, because hey it's not about production of honey. You're going to get honey in a top bar hive, but it's more about being a, a, a steward to uh, bees and not be so greedy that, you know, you have to talk about how many pounds of honey you got out of your hive this year. It's not about pounds of honey. Uh, we are not, you know, the, we are backyard beekeepers. We're not in, we're, we should not be producers of honey. We're, we're there just to have a beehive have maybe a small little bee yard. But if you're in it for the production of honey, um, you're probably not the bee's best friend. And um, I'm, I'm wary of you. <laughs> if, you're, if you're putting chemicals in your hive, I just ask you to please stop doing that. Uh, there's another group that I thought about. Uh, they're out in California, and I forget their name. I think they're called um, uh, back, Backwards Beekeeping, I think. And they're really cool because they're urban, they're in LA. They're doing beehives on, in cardboard boxes on people's houses on the roof and stuff. It's very cool. And they're all about get rid of foundation. Don't get me started on foundation. That is the worst thing that's happened in beekeeping in the last hundred years. The idea that the biggest enemy of bees right now is varroa mites. And what do varroa mites love? They love big roomy cells. So what do we give our bees? <laughs> we give them foundation that have these huge cells on them that are like 5.2 millimeters across when if you find a feral colony it'll make a, a, a cell size like 4.7 across. What are we doing? I mean that's that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Your biggest problem and you're saying come on in. The, it, it, we got a lot of room in here for you. Uh, we do a lot of poor things and uh, we need. I think we need to Get rid of the Langstroth hive. It's time has come, and uh, and let's let's move on with different ways of managing our bees and being better stewards of the bees. Thank you. Sight of the massive. Okay, so this is our uh, those are our two dead hives, and we're going to start with a top bar hive. We have three 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 pound packages, and I just didn't have enough time to make. Uh, you know, three top bar hives. I made one, and we're gonna put. You know, we're gonna restock those two death traps over there. And Natalie's gonna help me, and yep. we're gonna rock it. We'll see you in a few.
Oh, there's a ton of bees in here, dude. <laughs> oh, the hole's not covered. No wonder so many. I'm gonna fly out a little bit. That's cool. Maybe one more knock. Okay, cool. And now, nice. And then just take it. And then, yeah, yeah. Oh, Natalie, that's a beautiful thing. Fuck yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna help you. Yeah, hang on. They're okay, cool. Out. Damn, that's a lot of bees. I know. All right, cool. And let's shake, tap it again. Cool. <laughs> yeah, but one more knockdown. Good knockdown, good. And then you're gonna leave the box by the, the entrance yeah. and we're gonna walk away. Gotta get them out. I can get more out. That's cool, go. they'll get out. Run away! Right. Top bar high, here we come. Don't be, don't be mad, I'm helping you out. I think they're in there, dude. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, go, go ahead, give it a... All right, love Now, the way I made it... Oh, he doesn't know what it is. Just wait, he's eating the hay now. Horsey! 